Hello, everyone. It is my real pleasure to have you uh, connected to this uh, first experience with the expert commentary. It's going to be every day, this uh, 10 minutes chat, and it is my real pleasure to have with me today discussing developmental therapeutics, uh, Andres Cervantes and Rodrigo Dinsman. Great to have you today with me to have this chat. Uh, actually, I will uh, be very happy and glad, like everybody online, to hear your opinion about what happened today in ESMO 2021 about developmental therapeutics. We will talk about very, two, four very important uh, different abstracts and different approaches. Um, the first one is uh, uh, very, very interesting uh, using a drug that we know in oncology. It's uh, alepelisib, and um, maybe, uh, Andres, it would be great to, to have your point uh, on the use of this drug for this uh, very special uh, disease. Um, Andres, what was your idea and what was your impact and what you bring with you as a message out of this uh, discussion? I think it's, uh, it was an amazing presentation focusing on non-oncological diseases because those, those uh, um, uh, uh, issues, those problems are related to um, PA3K uh, activated mutations causing those uh, uh, overgrowth uh, 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 syndromes uh, related to this uh, specific molecular alteration. So the, the, this, this, this was a, um, a wide uh, compassionate uh, uh, program on using alpelisive um, continuously, mainly in, in uh, uh, pediatric uh, uh, patients, and it was uh, uh, quite an effective approach, also showing um, low levels of uh, uh, toxicity, even it looks like in this, in this uh, uh, cohort that toxicity related to alpelisive was uh, lower than the, uh, that observed in patients, for example, with, uh, with um, luminal B breast cancer, which is the, the group of patients in which uh, alpelisive is uh, licensed. I think this is a very interesting approach, right, uh, for a very special disease and this kind of molecular analysis and features that are performed now so broadly lead us, let's at the end, to use drugs also for other uh, diseases. And uh, how is it, Rodrigo, in uh, your experience or in your current or previous experiences at the different institutions who worked at? Do you do this kind of broad analysis? And this brings me already to the second topic. So this is the abstract 512 with uh, the analysis of uh, the use of the ATR inhibitor for ARID1A deficient mm -hmm. and uh, used as well in ARID1A intact advanced uh, solid tumor malignancies. So mm -hmm. what is your impact about, first of all, do we screen enough? Do we do enough analysis? And what is the impact of doing this analysis in terms of therapeutics? Correct, yeah. So these are very, very important abstract. Uh, I think it's um, increasing our knowledge about the predictive biomarkers uh, for chromatin remodeling alterations. More and more we see this. I mean, ARID 1A is in this pathway together with many other uh, genes uh, related to, I mean, epigenetic alterations in the tumor. Um, and we now have more evidence that these tumors may be more sensitive to DNA damage repair agents like ATR inhibitors, also combination with PARP inhibitors uh, in a new, a very unique context, uh, uh, but also uh, immunotherapy. There is also emerging data for ARID1A uh, being linked also to a higher tumor mutation burden, making the cells more susceptible to immunotherapy as well. So uh, I think um, we are learning in this process yet, uh, but at this moment, for sure, ARID1A tumors are eligible to um, uh, clinical trials with uh, agents in DNA damage repair and other epigenetic alterations. Uh, I think we, we will have to understand uh, whether there is like a tumor type dependency, whether you have to look at co-alterations in these tumors. Uh, we see ARID1A alterations in uh, uh, gynecological malignancies very frequently, also gastroesophageal cancer, hepatobiliary cancer. We see this across many, many malignancies. 
we don't just know don't know whether this has the same behavior in all diseases. So uh, I think the data is very promising, and there is a lot of enthusiasm for targeting uh, uh, this in a synthetical, lethal approach. Do you think, therefore, it will be important in the future to continue testing uh, for broadly and maybe eventually collect the data yeah. from all these uh, tumor types that are positive exactly. for Aridone? Yeah. What is your feeling about the pro uh, how to approach uh, then uh, a yeah. tumor and which kind of sequencing would you suggest to do? Yeah, so this is a very important point. We need the The, the complete picture of the of the disease from a genomic perspective up front very early. I mean, it's very hard to look at this alteration in isolation. Uh, it is true that in the clinical trial, they look at this. Uh, I mean, after uh, a mutation was detected, that even added immunostochemistry to look at whether there was protein loss. So, but um, it will definitely be a combination of broad, uh, comprehensive. NGF uh, together maybe with uh, protein to look at really deficiency of the protein in the cells. The same is, is going on for ATM mutation and loss of expression for ATR inhibitors. It is probably going to be a combination, but we cannot forget everything, all the genomic context that is around this alteration. So ideally, a broad NGF panel is, is also of help. So we just mentioned right now the issue of doing the sequencing and uh, looking at this, however, also at the loss of proteins on, at the level of immunohistochemistry. So maybe this could be easier. So maybe this could be also having a, a different economic impact. What is important to say is that uh, we can, in this case, is the loss of the protein. The next two drugs that we will talk about in developmental therapeutics is more about the uh, overexpression of some proteins that can be targeted by the use of uh, drug conjugates, right? So, Andre, so, so impressive uh, is the fact that the, the development of these new drug conjugates, very difficult, of course, uh, to, to think about all the ones that are ongoing, but certainly interesting, the two ones that we have seen today. The one, the first one targeting CD276 called also B7H3. What is your take-home message from this uh, uh, presentation? Well, first, that the antibody drug conjugates are not uh, uh, tackling very, very mm, specific uh, uh, proteins like the, the HER2 uh, pathway, but those uh, uh, proteins are expressed by a wide range of uh, tumors. In fact, in the first trial, the investigators decided not to select patients based upon the expression of these proteins proteins because they thought they were quite universal. So uh, I think uh, it is, it is uh, uh, amazing that the, despite the fact that they are uh, early clinical trials, in both of them there are responses across different types of tumors. Toxicity seems uh, tolerable. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, the, uh, those limiting toxicities have not been observed in any of the two uh, studies. And uh, I think this is a very, a very promising um, a type of uh, a therapeutic approach that we should uh, study in larger uh, um, study, learning what are the tumors that may benefit from, from um, this uh, experimental approach. But really, uh, a, a very uh, impressive uh, presentation, presentations, both of them. Um, underlining the future value of antibody drug conjugates for, um, I would say, a uh, um, wider population of oncology patients. Right, so because we have the CD276 and TROP2 as two possible targets. Uh, Rodrigo, if uh, we have to conclude from the day of today, uh, which kind of clinical trial would you have like to have at your unit open as uh, phase two? or if we would have to select uh, from uh, what we have heard today? Uh, um, it is hard to tell, but I, again, um, the more clinical trials you have, the better, because I think that the, the chemotherapeutic agents, you know, that it is linked there with the antibody drug, drug conjugate also matters, not only the expression of the target, but we know that even if you have high expression in some tumors, you just are not cancer cells are not sensitive to that payload. So we are, you know, so we are finished, unfortunately, with our time. 
Thank you very much, <laughs> everyone. And uh, thank you for being here. Thank you. Bye-bye. Excellent. Thank you. Bye-bye.